The United States has announced joint military flight drills in uh, Guyana this Thursday. This comes as tensions are soaring between Guyana and neighbouring Venezuela. Anger over a plan by the Venezuelans to annex part of Guyanan territory. At stake, access to huge reserves of oil. The move has been justified by Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro by historical claims to that land and a referendum, apparently returning a massive majority of Venezuelans for annexation. Though in Guyana, the point of view, of course, is di diametrically opposed. It's seen as a threat of incursion, invasion, or even war. Let's bring in our guest, uh, Anthony Pereira, to discuss uh, more on this matter. He's director of Kimberly Green Latin American and Caribbean Center at Florida International University. Joining us live from Miami. Good evening, sir. Why does Maduro think he has a right to annex this province? Well, I think as your package showed there, um, you know, he, he doesn't agree with the Guyanese that this is a, a settled matter. For, for Guyana, the 1899 arbitration was definitive. There's no dispute. The International Court of Justice has jurisdiction over this. They've said that Venezuela should not make any action. You know, this is a political legal matter. Uh, I think Venezuela, you know, takes a position that the arbitration was somehow unjust. They don't recognize it. They don't recognize the jurisdiction of the International uh, court of Justice. And so there's a lot of saber rattling going on right now. But I think it is also very connected to the internal political situation in Venezuela. It probably has more to do with that than any change of relations between Guyana and Venezuela. You know, in 2004, Hugo Chavez said he basically considered this uh, dispute to be over. Um, but it's been revived by Maduro, I think, for political purposes. Indeed. There's nothing like a bit of history uh, and a bit of saber rat rattling to get you some extra votes at the ballot box, and that's possibly what Maduro is up to. However, there is this issue of oil, isn't there? Yes. Yes, when people say it has to do with oil, that's often correct, and <laughs> there's a lot of oil there. I think for Ga the Guyana, it's existential, because this, this area that Venezuela is claiming is about two-thirds of the territory and a big chunk of the population of the country, you know, almost 40 percent of the population. So for them, it's existential. For Venezuela, it isn't. It's just a, an extra amount of oil on top of the enormous reserves that they already have. So there's a, you know, there's a, uh, a lack of symmetry there in terms of how fundamental this is for both countries. But, you know, as you say, Chavez has, has had the referendum. He's even got some of the opposition to him to uh, agree that he's in the right on this. He's also used it to charge people close to Maria Corina Machado, um, one of the strongest opposition candidates who, you know, the, the government says is not eligible to rule. But they've accused these people close to Machado of somehow being involved in a plot to foil the, the conduct of the referendum. So he's used it in both ways, both to galvanize uh, some of the opponents and then split the opposition and attack some people who are close to Machado. So he, it's, it's definitely, as you say, about oil, but also about the upcoming elections in Venezuela in 2024. I don't mean to be overdramatic here, but th this, this is sounding like it's a parallel with what Vladimir Putin's doing to Ukraine. It's, it's almost tantamount to a declaration of war, isn't it? Well, it's coming close to that. But I think, for example, the Brazilians are very concerned because the state of Roraima, the Brazilian state of Roraima, is in between Guyana and, and Venezuela. And it's the likely land route if there were to be a land invasion. And I think the Brazilians are hoping this is going to be something like not Ukraine, but it's going to be something like the 1995 conflict between Peru and Ecuador, which they were part of a group of countries that mediated that and actually led to a peace agreement that was signed in 1998. Now, it did get to a shooting war in that case, but I think the Brazilians are hoping that this will not devolve into a shooting war, that they can get some sort of resolution um, before it gets to that. And that's why Lula sent Celso Amorim, his international uh, advisor, to Caracas to talk to Maduro. And in fact, uh, he's been asked by the Guyanese president to, to do some of that kind of mediation. And I think the Brazilians are really hoping that this will remain a political and legal issue and not get militarized in the way that Venezuela is saying, saying it should be. Well, clearly Washington concerned having sent uh, troops there for military flight drills. 
Yes, that's a signal from the U.S. And of course, Exxon Mobil, which is a major, you know, multinational corporation with ties to the U.S., is is in Guyana, is part of the the oil exploration that's going on there, and the prospective oil boom in Guyana, which is driving this very rapid economic growth. So I think that's probably going to provide uh, deterrence as well, and and. Um, perhaps, you know, de-escalate this conflict and make sure that it doesn't become a military one. Anthony Pereira, thank you very much for giving us that assessment of the situation. It is a delicate situation indeed. Director of Kimberly Green Latin American and Caribbean Center at the Florida International University in Miami. Anthony, always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much thank indeed. You. We are watching for developments on that situation uh, in South America.